who better to tell us about uh, that constitution than one of the members that were present as part of the 72 that were working and crafted the constitution of the Republic of Namibia as we know it on the ninth uh, former uh, cabinet minister, former member of parliament. The list of accolades, of course, if I start with them, uh, we are going to spend a considerable amount of time here uh, in the studio. I'm glad to be joined by Dr. Pendikeni uh, Ivulaitana here in the studio. Mamaitana, thank you so much for making time out to join me. It's good to speak to you today. Yeah, mm. good to be here. Mm. Uh, I know, of course, uh, we are, we are, we are, we'll be focusing and, and, and talking about the, the, the constitution and the crafting of, of the document, but, mm. of course, we are doing it at a very somber time, at a very mm. sad time. Uh, Comrade Gengob, of course, uh, mm. uh, you work together to craft what we enjoy today mm. as a country. Mm. It's a difficult one, but I have to ask, um, how did the news uh, of his passing reach you and uh, where were you when that, when that happened? What were some of your immediate mm. reactions? Oh. It's, uh... No, thank you very much mm. for having me here uh, this afternoon. Uh, as you've said, today is a, a sober day. Mm -hmm. Not only that we are commemorating the uh, founding or the establishment of a constitution of the Republic of Namibia, but also paying tribute to a man who has been at the forefront of putting ideas together with others to give Namibia what we cherish, the Namibian basic law, the constitution. It is uh, very unfortunate that uh, we are sitting here today talking about Hage Kainkop in the past. The news of his demise found me at my house in Omthia. A comrade, young comrade, called my number at 2.46 hours in the morning. I one person who do not receive calls at night. When I go to sleep, I kind of silence all my gadgets. That call came in vibrating and it woke me up. And I decided I'm not going to answer it, but I'll, I'll see. Who made such a call? When I saw the name of the person who called, it immediately registered to me that Comrade Hage was no more. Inasmuch that I thought not receiving the call would not disturb my sleep, that alone feeling that way kept me so awake and I started fumbling through my phone now to find a confirmation of something and truly I found something that cleared my mind that Comrade Hage was gone. Obviously from there on I, I couldn't fall asleep until the following day. And uh, yeah, the rest is history. Yeah, he, he left us. Of course, in terms of, you know, one of the things that, that everybody has been talking globally, of course, is the transition that we've had in terms mm -hmm. of uh, uh, the small transition we're handing over now to, mm -hmm. to the VP who has, who has become president on, on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Um, and as we start in the, con uh, the, the con Constitution conversation, I just wanted to, to ask your, your reflections on that. You know, is this what you had envisioned when you were sitting down and, and crafting the Constitution mm -hmm. and, and building this, this nation state as we know it to have that sort of mm -hmm. 
uh, a, a reaction when, when we are faced with, with an uncertain uncertainty of this nature? You know, a constitution, uh, it's called Grund Norm. Mm. It's, a, it's a foundation, foundational law that is supposed to uh, anticipate mm. all kinds of situations. And the constitution, it's called a living law. Uh, a living law in the sense that as the nation uh, develops, the nation experiences situations uh, that are not anticipated at the beginning, then you hear that uh, people are talking about amendments. It's because uh, the constitution is supposed to cover all aspects of life, of society, mm -hmm. so that any incidents that happens should have been anticipated. anticipated. And exactly that what happened on Sunday, thank God it was anticipated, arrangements were in the constitution and immediately uh, Comrade Hage passed on. Uh, people rush to the constitution because that is the guiding principle. To say what, what must we what, do next? What must we do next? Mm. Yeah, what must we do next? And it was there, clearly. And uh, uh, Namibia has set a very, very historic example that uh, w w the, the, the passing on of any of our leaders do not have to throw the society into quandary. Mm. Uh, uh, we, we must have arrangements in place to take, you know, mm. that situation in, in its totality in a, a, a more matured, undisturbed manner. Mm. That does not mean that uh, we are not sensitive to the passing of the person, but institutions mm. must continue to operate. to operate. Processes must come in place. Uh, 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 although these are uh, uh, articles we normally do not deal with mm. on daily basis, mm. but they are very, very important. Let, let's take a step back to the, the, the days of the Constituent Assembly. Of course, we are, we are looking at a situation where the transition is taking place. Everybody is now, all the political parties are fighting for power. Of course, we know mm -hmm. during that time, Swapo was already recognized mm -hmm. as a representative of the Namibian people. Mm -hmm. But now you have to work together. You have to decide how this government has to be formed. Mm -hmm. Before you sit down for the, for the, for the, for the Constituent Assembly, mm -hmm. uh, take us through some of the conversations that were happening on the sidelines, some of the concerns. Mm -hmm. You know, as this team was being selected, mm -hmm. uh, what was the thinking behind who should be part of the 72? Well, uh, very, very true, very, very important consideration at that time. You know, our election system is uh, uh, constituency-based, mm. uh, not, not constituent, national-based, uh, uh, what do they call it? Proportional representation. Mm. So when the results of that election in 1989 came out, parties have won proportionately to their seats in the Constituent Assembly. And therefore, all the parties that won that election were asked to nominate their own representative in the a drafting committee mm -hmm. because the constituent assembly as a whole could not draft you know the document people are too many to 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 find a common ground mm -hmm. so be, because we did not know each other uh, uh, per se 
Of course, there are also those we, general trust issues. We, we, we <laughs> really did not yeah. trust each other. Uh, so each party identified their best uh, negotiators. Uh, Swapo uh, under the leadership of Comrade Hage, whom we chose as the chairman of the Constituent Assembly. Yeah, had to oversee also that uh, from the Swapo side, who proportionately should attend the drafting committee. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, I can't recall now how mm -hmm. many we were from, yeah. from Swapo. However, uh, it was felt there should be a woman on the drafting committee. Uh, not just taken out of uh, uh, the blues, but knowing also that the women in, this, in Swapo played a crucial role uh, uh, in, the, in the struggle. And therefore, their side of the, the, the thought through independence, to independence, should be captured mm. in uh, the document that will eventually govern our affairs mm. in the country. So I was chosen as one of the 21 uh, the, the members. Co the, the committee of, because uh, so, you, uh, you had the 72, the assembly, yes, yes. then you had the smaller committee the smaller of 21. 21. Ah. Yeah, uh, parties, I think, were seven, and they were represented on the drafting committee proportionately to their uh, mm. number in parliament. I mean, in the Constituent Assembly. So, uh, uh, the Constituent Assembly was adjourned mm. uh, for the committee to be able to sit down. Mm. Uh, 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 but however, before the, 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 uh, the Constituent Assembly was, dis uh, was uh, adjourned, the modus operandi was were, uh, stipulated uh, how the committee should do its work. Because mm -hmm. uh, every party that rep uh, got represented in the Constituent Assembly had a draft uh, constitution. So at the 72, just to, just to put it together, at the yeah. 72 level, mm. all the political parties that are part of the assembly yeah. had their own version of the constitution. Uh, precisely. And they are proportionally represented in the 72. Yes. But then you take the same proportional representative uh, uh, modus operandi yeah. to the 21 as well. Exactly. So nobody was overpowering. In the 21, no. it was also proportional representative exactly. based on the election results of 1989. Exactly. So now you're sitting with this uh, <coughs> uh, 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 different versions of the constitution. Oh. Yeah. Okay, no, I, I understand we've got some breaking news. Uh, we are being informed now that the president will be making an important announcement at one o'clock from State House, uh, Dr. Nangolombumba. Uh, so please be on standby with that as well. We will cross over uh, when they are ready on State House uh, to hear what that announcement is going to be. But we continue, of course, with our discussion uh, unpacking mm -hmm. the Constituent Assembly and how the Constitution was drafted. Mm -hmm. uh, so you say now we are sitting with these different versions of everybody has their own. Mm -hmm. How does the negotiation continue from there? Where does the compromise no, bef start? Before we went to the, the negotiations, uh -huh. a honorable late Derek Madge mm. made a proposal that uh, out of the seven draft constitu constitutions, the Swapo constitution should be the guiding constitution. But, but now here's the context. For him to make that pronouncement, remember, he's not part of Swapo. No. Quite the opposite. Oh, oh, he, that pronouncement took everybody by surprise. I, I, I think that statement bro broke the ice, as it were. Uh, whoever was on guard started relaxing 
that what? Be because he's also a, he's also a senior politician at that stage yes, already. Yes, he he's was sort of the an leader. elder. Yeah, he was the leader of the official, if we can call it that way, mm. official opposition, mm. and made such a, 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 a recommendation, and uh, that made things much much easier. Because now the others are saying if if they are willing to compromise to that extent, yeah. in the interest of the people. Mm and say, let's take Sopo's constitution as the foundation and build yes. on that. Yes. That brought the confidence now in it, the rest of the parties that were involved in exactly. the negotiation. Exactly, right. exactly. So going to the drafting sessions became much more easier because now we were following uh, what Swapo had uh, in its draft constitution, uh, trying now to either introduce new things that were missing, mm -hmm or uh, just agreeing on the text as Swapo had proposed it. Talking about the text, th th there are, I understand, of course, there were some issues that were a bone of contention. Mm. Uh, one of them, um, and the major one that everybody keeps talking about was the, the, the president. How much power should the president have? Should it be an executive yeah. president mm. uh, that appoints, that mm. has got mm. powers to appoint, or should it be a president mm. like the mm. one we have now, where, mm. for example, the Judicial Service Commission has to make a recommendation for him to mm. appoint a judge, for mm. example. Mm. Talk to us about, ab mm. ab about some of the, 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 the back and forth. Yeah, mm. that, that issue was really contentious. Uh, and that's where uh, you, you could s see that uh, the, the other six, as opposed to Swapo, mm. who were kind of apprehensive. Mm. Uh, they wanted us to have a titular kind of uh, a president. Oh, a cerem ceremonial Ceremonial. President. And then the rest of uh, the power sits with the prime minister. Exactly. Ah. But then the, the Swapo draft constitution had an executive president. Yeah, that was our proposal. So uh, that now been given, uh, you know, Comrade Hage was such a skillful negotiator. Whenever we reached a stalemate kind of, then he would propose adjournment. Uh, uh, we'll adjourn. Uh, of course, each team uh, had its own lawyers behind the scene uh, whom we were consulting during such breaks. And everybody had their own lawyers and uh, uh, we, we, we felt uh, strongly that uh, uh, we cannot have a titular kind of uh, a president, mm -hmm. a ceremonial. Uh, so uh, that negotiation took some time uh, consulting behind mm. the scene and uh, until such a point that consensus was reached. Yeah, and then the constitution end up with uh, an executive president as we have it today. Mm. Mm. And, and talking about that, I think in terms of the negotiations, uh, we a bit earlier on, and I actually want to play that clip from uh, 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 the, the speaker, uh, mm -hmm. where he was saying, whenever there was, like you said now, a stalemate of you know, consulting on the side, one of the mm -hmm. other contentious issues was the abolishment of, 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 uh, of, of capital punishment. Yes. I don't know whether we have that clip ready. Can, can, can we play that clip of, uh, of, of, of Prof. Kashavivi, just his remarks on that? Let's, let's really take a look at this one quickly before, as, as we are continuing the conversation. Okay, I think the team is still getting that ready, but mm. what he was... recognition of the fact that many of our people were punished through uh, capital punishment by hanging and therefore the issue came up during the drafting of the constitution. What do we do with this particular issue? Do we do away with the capital punishment 
or is it going to be retained in the Constitution to be part of the Constitution? The overwhelming view of the time was that we have to do away with the capital punishment. No more hanging. But then the issue came up. Where do we derive the mandate to do away with something as important as that? And some members will say, well, in the normal society, you have to go to the country to seek the mandate of actually having to take a decision of that magnitude. So where do we go? So I remember uh, our dear brother, Dr. Hagi Genko, saying, we, we claim to be predominantly a Christian country. Now, in the absence of going back to the country to, through a referendum or having elections, maybe we should call in Namibian church leaders to come and pronounce themselves on this important issue. Because it, there is a moral issue here, fundamentally. And I think and this is what led the committee to request church leaders from various denominations to come and hear us out. And they were requested to delib deliberate on this important issue. And they said to us, give us a few days. We will look into the issue and come back and report. Because we have to get on with the job of finishing the drafting of the Constitution anyway. So, um, so this is what happened, and they, uh, uh, they, they were called in, and they were requested, and they asked that we should be given the time to consider the issue. After which they returned and told us, few words, have courage, do it. And that is how the abolition of the capital punishment found its way into the constitution of independent Namibia. Well, of course, that's uh, that remarks by uh, Professor Kashavivi as we're continuing with this discussion. We are joined in studio uh, by a person who has been responsible, part of the committee of 21 of drafting the Constitution, uh, Dr. Pendekini uh, Ivula Intana, former uh, member of parliament, cabinet, and the list, of course, is endless in terms of the service that she has provided uh, to the nation, uh, the Republic of Namibia. As you as you're watching that that insert, um, mm -hmm. you were mentioning a bit earlier on, of course, mm -hmm. that there was a host of consultations and sometimes stalemates when it comes to mm -hmm. to this item. Mm -hmm. What what are your, your your immediate thoughts when you when you watch that clip now and, and contribution from Professor Kashavivi? Well, uh, I just admired. I admired the wisdom, the skillfulness of uh, the negotiating team that uh, where we, we we could not find a way through we we knew where to go for advice and uh, truly that had helped the process so that consultation that the culture of consulting different sectors of society mm. is not new it's to not a democratic new. namibia is not new at all yeah, it, it, it played a big, big role uh, during that period. Mm. Mm. As, as, as we're looking at that, of course, another uh, one of the issues uh, was to have a sort of a clear distinction in terms of the separation of power mm. for the different branches uh, mm. of, of, of government and so on. Um, mm. How was the content of, of, of that conversation? Is that something you could easily agree on? Ooh, well, uh, we, we, we were also consulting many other known uh, progressive mm. constitutions. Uh, the Constitution of India, the Constitution of the US, and other constitutions. 
and 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 we we found solutions, you know, from those others, mm. uh, and therefore we we could not create a will where there are, you know, others already. Mm. So uh, uh, un unless really the 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 choice was so hard mm. uh, uh, to 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 accept, uh, even if. Uh, we were to consult other uh, jurisdictions. jurisdictions. Mm. Let, let's let's look at the con constitution. I think some of the some of the important provisions. One of the most important ones, and and also when you're in the cabinet, you would continuously go back to that is chapter three, mm. the protection of our fundamental human rights. Mm. A very special chapter in mm. in the constitution. Uh, mm. One of the things that makes it special, of course, is that you decided there at the constituent assembly that this chapter and the rights and freedoms that are enshrined mm. here. Mm. should not be negated from ever mm. Mm. they should not be changed mm. unless it is to increase the value mm. for mm. the people mm. why was that an important provision uh, for, for for chapter three well chapter three is a legacy of security council resolution 435 mm. uh, that was a really preemptory uh, that we have to accept it. Uh, otherwise, it would have brought in delays uh, in in the in the in the attainment of our independence. Yeah. Because one thing <laughs> that we as a Swapo team did not like was the presence of South African representative in Namibia. We wanted him gone yesterday, and <laughs> and therefore some of the the issues were thought, ah, let's move on, uh, let independence come, uh, and then we can we can deal with it afterwards. Yeah, because we we didn't trust the AG who was seated here, who, who, who maybe he was uh, organizing for the likes of April first. You know, mm -hmm. who, and uh, the, the whole leadership of Swapo was home, uh, except the president. So you're looking at a situation where there's, a, there's still a very serious risk that there could even be, whether it's violence, assassinations, any Precisely. of that was still on the table. You, you, you know, and there were incidences that uh, indicated in that direction. The, the, uh, there was an incident of. Uh, arm catches found somewhere in the Ucho, around the Ucho. Mm. Uh, and th that gave... And this, this is in 89 now. 19, 89. 89. Yeah, it gave us a fright. And now, be just before that, the year before, there is the, 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 the post office bombings. Uh, precisely, yes. So all, all these possibilities could not be ruled out. And therefore, we, we had that agency in mind. Uh, let's finish the drafting as quickly as possible so that we get this gentleman out. And now we are sitting in a situation where because of that provisions we are number mm. one with world press, uh, world press freedom on the continent. Precisely. We are fourth and of course a number mm. of other mm. uh, human rights achievements that we have done. Mm. I would be failing in, in, in this conversation if I don't bring in uh, the issue around the recognition of our traditional authorities, our customary mm. law. Mm. Article 66, you're saying that our customary law will be mm. treated on the equal plane and mm. recognized in this country mm. alongside our civil courts mm. as, we, as we know it. Yes. Uh, reflect on that a little bit, you know, that recognition of, mm. of our traditional authorities mm. as the true owners of the land mm. and the governance of their people. Yeah, we, we are, we, 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 we came from such backgrounds mm -hmm. and the, mm, to think that we could host the traditional authorities that keep order in communities, we saw ourselves throwing Namibia into turmoil uh, because this is a culture, this is a tradition each one of us came from such backgrounds, and therefore uh, it was t 
to recognize them and direct them in a way towards uh, the constitution so that they don't do things uh, who are not in line with the because that's the condition that they were given to say yeah, look exactly. we recognize you yes but provided, for both of you provided yeah, yes that provided you adhere mm. to the stipulations of the, the constitution. constitution yeah mm. how mm. do you think we're doing so far in, in, in that area as a country uh, of course, for 34 years, it's quite a long time, but mm. th from your general observation now, you know, having been in the administration and so forth, mm. how do you, are, are we doing fine with regards to the recognition of our traditional authorities and, and the role that they play in terms of how you envisioned it when mm. you were uh, giving them that recognition in Article 66? You, you know, there was a time uh, some years ago when we were celebrating again the 9th of February, uh, when I, I kind of blame ourselves that in spite of the fact that we have the best constitution, mm -hmm. I think we are not doing enough to educate mm -hmm. the society, the community on the provisions within the constitution. Uh, 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 the document is excellent, but we are not, everybody is not owning it. Uh, people kind of do things sometimes as they used to do it uh, in the past. I think education is very, very important in making our people understand and live uh, according, to according to, 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 the, to the constitution. The constitution. Because, I mean, w you don't have that sort of smooth transition unless mm. everybody knows the law mm. and respects it. Mm. Exactly. Mm. Uh, and that, that's why you, 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 you hear that uh, whenever there is uh, a, a death mm. in a certain community of, of a leader, mm. traditional authority leader, there are squabbles, squabbles through and through. And uh, not so many traditional leaders have their own documents that are gui uh, guiding them. Guiding documents in terms yeah. of how to run their... How to run the yeah. administration, mm -hmm. except the Ondonga traditional authorities. Uh, 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 maybe not only them. Maybe there are others. That have come, but, th but you're saying that's the, that's, the, that's the next step, to be able to formalize also that aspect. Yeah, exactly. Ah. It should be in black and white. If, if that will guide the traditional authority in terms of inheritance mm. uh, and, and other situations. Uh, nowadays, they, they, they seem to be uh, just doing mm. things as they used to do it mm. in the past. But in, in terms of in terms of that, <coughs> during, during the crafting as well, we know, of course, mm. know that there are some uh, uh, more compromises that 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 that, that uh, uh, scholars have been talking about. One of them, mm. of course, the issue around uh, the private ownership of property, Article mm. 16, and mm. the, con the, the talk around uh, land expropriation. Mm. Uh, some quarters of society were feeling that maybe it was too much of a compromise mm. to have that protection of private property and the justification for for expropriation in the constitution. Mm. Uh, what are your reflections and musings on that? And what was the kind of thinking during the time when you said, let's include this um, in, in the constitution? You, you, you know, that, that Article 16 is part of uh, Chapter 3. Mm. It's a package that came through the Resolution 435. So now the Western, con con Western Contact Group. Western mm. Contact Group. Uh, uh, because we did not unpack uh, many of those uh, articles, mm. uh, when you talk about human rights and then you include properties, in it, what is property? To uh, human rights. To yeah. human rights. Mm. Uh, it was later that it became obvious mm. that uh, uh, property here means those that own the land. The pre previously advantaged. Previously advantaged Namibians mm. are protected, while uh, those who, who were denied. 
uh, do not have uh, access. So that, that is one disadvantage of uh, that package through Resolution 435. Mm. It, 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 the, the, the time it takes, of course, we are still on, on, on that, uh, the, the final thing I just want to touch on, uh, on in terms of that was also the issue around Article 11 and Article 12, mm. which I think if, if, if you look at it right now, it serves as, as, as very well. Mm. That talks about the detention of mm. somebody when they get arrested. Mm where the mm. police is only given 48 hours mm. Mm. if they have a reasonable suspicion to, mm. you know, summon you, whether it's mm. through arrest or mm. serving you with a, a letter to come and appear. Mm. Uh, but fundamentally, we are saying in Article 11 and 12, mm. you are innocent until, until. proven guilty by yeah. a competent court. There shall not be any arbitrary arrest mm. in the Republic of Namibia, in detention, mm. rather. Mm. Uh, reflect on that the, a little bit for us. Yeah, that, that is part of... Uh, the Swapo constitution, draft constitution. Mm -hmm. Because what made us run away from this country or go in exile in the majority of cases was really the arbitrariness of the system of apartheid. It, 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 it was on the top of our hair that what South Africa was doing mm -hmm. to us we cannot allow ourselves now to inherit such a practice. And therefore, uh, we, we, we felt strongly that, uh, uh, that that must be done. And uh, as I said, uh, we were consulting so many other constitutions. Mm. We kept borrowing the best practice elsewhere uh, in, mm. yeah, in, uh, in order to safeguard our own interests here. Yeah. I understand that during the time, particularly also talking about the arbitrary arrest and detentions, mm -hmm. that it was so bad that even mm -hmm. in our uh, 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 Criminal Procedure Act, mm -hmm. you had to include uh, 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 the, the, the principle of, of habeas corpus, mm -hmm. where if somebody is detained mm -hmm. for longer than those 48 mm -hmm. hours, yeah. the family has the right to be shown the mm -hmm. body where is mm -hmm. the person you must Precisely. physically see. So it was mm -hmm. that bad. It, it was that bad. Many people disappeared during the, 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 the apartheid era. Uh, the, the, uh, they were arrested and uh, never heard mm. about up to this moment. Mm. And th th that, that was a bitter pill in our mouth mm. uh, to, to, to continue with such a system. Uh, it's, we, we were fighting to, to, to rule ourselves. And, and to, to rule ourselves with such a iron fist, uh, nobody really wanted uh, uh, such a thing. And the the opposition uh, could not also uh, oppose uh, this view because uh, they had equally they, suffered. <laughs> they they equally <laughs> suffered. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So th these are some of the easier. Provisions, provisions that, that you could bring in. Yes, mm. that give, did not give us a, a lot of a, a lot credits. of edge. In, in terms of Article one, one, 141, of course, also speaks about mm. the public service. Mm. And uh, um, when we are analyzing the challenge that we are sitting now with, with, mm. a, with a huge mm. wage bill, etc., there was a remark that was made mm. a couple of years ago that said, mm. well, you know, nobody's looking at 141 because we mm. had to make a compromise with the mm. public service that was there at the time. Mm. Um, and one of those compromises were to carry on mm. with, that, with that public service without having mm. to fire those people and now bringing mm. on the new cadres mm. that, are, that are coming on board. Mm. Uh, reflect a little bit on, on, on that for us. Yeah, uh, you, you know, uh, the negotiations was based on give and take. Mm. Uh, and I, as I said, we wanted the AG to go yesterday, and uh, uh, and and we we relied on the future, mm. uh, hoping that after independence we will be able to unravel mm. and correct mm. uh, some of those uh, 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 compromises. Mm. Uh, however, as time went by, it became very difficult to to go back to our idea of a smaller civil service. Mm -hmm. 
uh, in, in actual fact, uh, the policy of national reconciliation that we there also we go now. That's <laughs> now the other issue that you yeah. have to consider. Yeah, that we we, we introduced mm. uh, because it is swap uh, policy. Uh, it, this is the, the swap of policy before independence already. Be, before independence, yes. Ah. Yeah, and therefore. We, we found ourselves also wrapped into our own, you know, policies. Mm -hmm. uh, what national reconciliation is that one where you are now sending others on the street? Mm -hmm. If so, we compromised by saying uh, whoever is now reaching retirement must go and replaced by the uh, incoming. And uh, the positions did not become less. It, 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 became, it became a continuous you know, process. Mm. Uh, I, 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 some of these things became really very difficult uh, to, to undo. Mm. Yeah. But to, to, and to look at it, I think, particularly now at the size of, of where, the, where the public service is, one of the con 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 uh, questions that I always had at the back of my mind is, Imagine we were fighting against these people. They were the ones that were using the law to oppress us. Mm. Independent comes, and then tomorrow, you have to walk in as a minister, as mm. a deputy minister, mm. as, a exec as a permanent secretary, mm. and lead the very staff mm. that they hate you. Mm. Yeah. Uh, how, how was that transition like now? We are finished now with this, and we are taking over. Mm. We are starting with the administration of, of, of government mm. to walk into these corridors and to lead mm. the very people mm. that were against you. Mm. Yeah, uh, it, it happened. Uh, the only thing that we did was that uh, the, the top civil service, permanent secretaries, uh, uh, particularly permanent secretaries, mm. were almost all from exile. Mm. Uh, yes, because we, we, we thought this were the cadres who would now oversee the work being done by those under. Uh, but then the majority of those we found also in high positions mm. uh, were not very comfortable. They, they resigned and, uh, and left. So there were, there, were, there were those that left by, the, by their oh, own yes. volition? Oh, a, a lot uh, of them. So I'm not going to report to <laughs> <laughs> this one. Uh -uh. This one. Yeah. So, so they left, and as they left, the positions got filled by those we thought mm. uh, would further the cause of and our independence. And, 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 and for you, personally, mm. coming in uh, under, and of course I'm speaking under correction here, mm. uh, as, the, as the Deputy Minister for Conservation and Tourism, mm. under the founding, uh, yes. I think you were there for for brief uh, for brief while be before mm. becoming a full minister. Yes. Now, as we know, of course, that that aspect now deals with mm. the land, the tourism. We mm. know who were the owners during that time. Mm. It must have. How, how, were you prepared for that? How, it, how was that like personally for you? You 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 know, coming from exile, having lived as a soldier, mm. uh, I I did not feel threatened by anybody. I, I, they, 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 sh they should do give me th the necessary respect mm. as, as, as uh, a leader. Uh, but uh, they, they were also clever to know mm. whom to... Whom to antagonize. To, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I remember the late uh, comrade... Uh, Nico Bessinger, mm. my minister, may his soul rest in peace. Mm. He assigned me the duty of overseeing the parks. Etosha National Park and mm. all others. Mm. Uh, and, and you know what? Many of the former South African soldiers, Kufud, Swatief and whatnot, they all just went into that ministry, yes, as uh, game guards and game uh, guards, and yeah, uh, running yeah. game farms He's and uh, farmers, et cetera, et cetera. Precisely, uh, and and they did a lot of damage. Uh, this these parks were equipped 
They had facilities, tents and whatever else. They were studying like nothing. <laughs> so for them, but it was their retirement packages. They, 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 are, they, they are preparing it, it, exit yeah, packages for ex, themselves. Exit package. But there were others also who were reporting them. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. White as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it, they, they, they felt uh, what was happening was not right. So uh, I, I used to visit these places and uh, address them. Mm -hmm. Tell them we are seeing what we are doing and uh, be careful. So it, at least they became a little bit careful, uh, but uh, it, it was it, rough. It, it, it wasn't easy. <laughs> <laughs> it was I, can, I can imagine now because, of course, <laughs> if I have to administer <laughs> uh, uh, home affairs or finance, I'm here. <laughs> I'm, I'm at the head office. I'm <laughs> here in Ventuga. I don't have <laughs> to deal with those on the ground. <laughs> yeah. But for conservation tourism, <laughs> <laughs> you need to be there in the bush with the others. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Mm. Um. After that, of course, we are looking at of course, full cabinet membership as a full minister for youth and sport. Yes. That's the time now uh, mm. under the, the, the leadership of, of Comrade Hage now, of course, President Sam Nioma and then mm. and him as, as a prime minister. Yeah. Reflect on, 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 on that a bit. What was the mm. leadership style like? And of course, now you have this brand new constitution that you must mm. implement. Mm. Yeah, uh, you know, we had a leadership of SWAPO that came almost intact mm. uh, in the country. You were ready, you were prepared, we were prepared. to run the country. Yes, we were prepared and uh, uh, we knew what we wanted. Mm. Uh, and there was total commitment to, to serve, total mm. commitment. Uh, when I was given the Ministry of Youth and Sport, which was a department in the Ministry of Education, mm. Uh, I did not have a building where to operate from mm. uh, and I had to look for uh, for that and I found uh, one building, government building, so we went there and, uh, and we had to now design a structure mm. and design the programs. So the, the so the, the structure of the Ministry of Youth and Sport as we know it now, the directorates, etc. You had to design. You had I to work had on that. to design it, mm. uh, and and the other countries were also eager to help. Mm. So I, I before I started, uh, you know, crafting this, that, and the other, mm. I paid visit to mm. friendly countries, look at uh, how they they were operating, and yeah, mm. I borrowed. And in terms of the, in terms of the. The, 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 the amendments uh, on the Constitution, I really want to touch on that before we close off. Mm. Uh, we know, of course, there, there are only about three major amendments that took place on the Constitution. The first mm. one being the extension for, for, for mm. the founding the father. Founding father. Uh, here you have to help me now with the, with the period. Mm. Was that during the time that you were Attorney General or was that, was, was that before no, that? it was and before. It was before that. Mm. But just reflect a little bit on the thinking behind you know, the extension mm. of that and mm. the, 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 the amendments to the Constitution and why it mm. also takes mm. such a, a huge majority mm. to be able to affect any change in the Constitution. Yeah. Uh, you know, years fly by mm. without you knowing. And uh, 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 Nyoma came in, mm. President Nyoma came in through a nomination from the Constituent Assembly. Mm. Uh, he was not elected. And uh, uh, the first five years, uh, and then the Constitution was talking about uh, universal suffrage and uh, mm. elections mm. of the president. Mm. Uh, the first term flew by, second term came and it flew by again and I think the, both the Prime Minister and others mm. felt that uh, uh, going or choosing another leader while we were still busy setting up institutions mm. uh, would not create stability. And therefore, the Prime Minister then, Comrade Hage, mm. uh, undertook that upon himself to 
lo not lobby as such, just to, to, to explain why it was important that Nuyoma must continue uh, so that the country stabilizes. Mm. But then the question was, uh, since the constitution is talking about two terms, mm. How do, how do we do that? How so do you so do that, that? That, that process, and I think it's important to clear it up right now, and I, and I mm. like the fact that you, that you mentioned that, mm. that it, it wasn't a process that was led by the founding father himself. It no. was the head of government business in parliament, the prime minister during that mm. time, yeah. Dr. Hake, that led the process of saying, listen, mm. we need to reconsider this thing. Yes. It was him. Mm. And uh, he, his argument was, Nyoma was not elected first term. Mm. And therefore, we cannot say second. He served, he served, he served uh, you know, mm. two terms already. Because the Constitution, in as much that it's talking about two terms, mm. it also talks about the election of the president. Mm. When was he elected? He was only elected once. Eh? Uh, 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 the other term, he was nominated from the Constituent Assembly. So that argument sold, and it put everybody at, at ease. And Nuyoma, we, we changed the constitution to allow him and him alone to serve those three terms. And, and, and on that elections uh, of the president, during the conversation of the constituent assembly, mm -hmm. one also derives, deduces that if we had not chosen the executive president route, Mm. The prime minister would have to come from the party, and it's not directly mm. elected by, by, by the people. Mm -hmm. Was that uh, as well a, 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 a serious consideration and part of the policy of, of SWAPO to make sure that when we go for elections, mm. the people directly vote for their president? That was a consideration. And we, 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 we felt strongly that uh, election was a very important process to legitimize a, a leader, uh, uh, other than uh, somebody who is just, uh, you know, what is the purpose also of having uh, just some a ceremonial, a ceremonial president, a, a ceremonial yeah. president to, to, to do what? We, we want an executive person who will be able to direct uh, the, the, the country. Uh, of course, the, therefore, we, we put in uh, checks and balances that mm. the president decides in cabinet. Mm. So all, all these things were being considered together. So those are the checks and balances you said, look, yes. we're making it an executive president, but, but cabinet, he, he will do it in consultation of yes. cabinet. If yes. it's something important, it must go to parliament. Yeah. Mm. If you have to appoint new judges, mm. Mm -hmm. Judicial Service Commission, comprising mm -hmm. of professionals in the mm. In, the in judici law, in yes. judiciary, mm. must recommend to you. Yeah, exactly. Those are the checks mm. that we built in, in order to curb mm. the excessive power. Mm. One of the, mm. the, 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 of course, the third amendment was also quite a, quite a significant one. Mm. We know when, when the proposition was made by the former, former justice minister, mm. uh, there were certain quotas. Oh, but why do we need a vice president? What will mm. he be doing? Wasting mm. of state resources, etc., mm. etc. If we look at it now, hindsight, mm. <laughs> in terms of what happened on mm. Sunday, what are your thoughts on you know, those third round of amendments that we made <laughs> and how things have played out now? Uh, I'm telling you the the Constitution must be anticipatory. Mm. Mm? Anticipatory. Uh, had we not make such an amendment, Namibia could have been thrown into turmoil mm. today. Uh, thank God there was that oversight. Uh, not, not there was that uh, foresight. foresight. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, you, you know, sometimes people oppose things for the sake of opposition. Opposing. Or sometimes because I didn't bring it to the table. Exactly. It's not me, but ah, I, I, I admire mm -hmm. the wisdom that, that, that prevailed. Yeah. 
in terms of in terms of setting up mm -hmm. uh, setting the constitution up as it as it as it were mm -hmm. of course one of the final things really I, I, I would like to touch on and I think I'll be doing a bit of a disservice of course also if we don't really talk about that we know the we've been having free and fair elections over the years mm -hmm. um, of course they have a constitutional challenges as well in some mm -hmm. of the outcomes mm -hmm. but just to reflect on of course we know this year is an election year mm -hmm. Uh, we've already shown the world that mm. we don't have a problem transitioning. Mm. We've done it three other times before, mm. and this year is coming now. Mm. Um, within the context, of course, of, 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 of the Constitution, mm. why is it important for Namibians really to first participate, but also to adhere to the procedures mm. around what the Constitution mm. and the law says for the elections that are coming up? Mm. It is important. Uh, you know, the late... Uh, President mm. used to like these mm. big administrative words. Uh, we must have uh, institutions, processes, mm. and uh, systems. And systems. <laughs> hmm? mm. you, uh, initially, you you don't see the the essence, but thinking of it, thinking of it, the the elections are a process that must be guided by institutions. And these institutions must be democratic, must work in a transparent way in order to settle the minds of the citizenry. Uh, we we, we so far have been uh, working very, very well. Our regular elections, we don't miss them. For whatever reason, we don't. So far, 34 years have passed. And uh, I, I, I just hope that the, the, the institutions that are tasked to carry out these uh, uh, processes stick to must stick to the law. To the law. In conclusion, uh, as, uh, of course, we know we're still busy with the morning period and mm -hmm. we will have other occasions to, 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 to chat, but I know it will get busy for you. Mm -hmm. What are your, 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 your parting words to the Namibian nation during this, this, this period of mourning? How do we remember your comrade uh, uh, Hage King for the contribution he has made to, to this country? Oh, you, you, you know, I, I said before, Hage seemed not to have escaped us, mm. but looking at it, I feel as if he just slipped away. Uh, Hage has done so much. For Namibia. I related my association with him at individual and personal level. When he was our director at the Institute for Namibia, I talked about my knowledge of the Swapo Constitution, mm -hmm. where I got it from. It was from him. In the 70s, uh, he, he, he molded many of us into who we are today. Uh, Hage has touched so many lives, has done so much to the institutions that we currently have in the country. He, the man was just all over. As I, I, I visualize him, tall, hefty, mm. happy all the time, but imposing also. His physique is equal to his brains. And wherever he was, he was felt. And wherever he touched, we remember. 
and um, I I was at uh, his house last night, and I saw and listened to Namibians talking about their president and the tribute we are giving to him are worth the life he lived. And uh, yeah, we are going to miss him for a long time. Thank you very much for making time out to join me on the program today. Mm. Most welcome. Well, of course, uh, we have it reflecting on the constitution of Namibia as we continue on Constitution Day, being joined, of course, there by a former member of parliament, former member of cabinet, uh, well, a liberation struggle fighter, uh, of course, member of the Constituent Assembly, uh, Dr. Pendukeni Ivula Itana, joining us 